I have received a letter from the honourable member for Chifley proposing that a definite matter of public importance be submitted to the House for discussion, namely how the government's failures to deliver on its announcement announcements is harming everyday Australians. I call on all those honourable members who approve of the proposed discussion to rise in their places. And I call the honourable member for Chifley. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, Ed. See if it's like riding a bike. Back, what mischief. Really Colleagues uh, uh, and Speaker, uh, I just want to do, if I can at the outset, just say it is always an honour to be an MP in this place. Uh, and so it's something I'm very grateful for, and I'm also very grateful for the chance to be able to serve on the front bench. And I, I just wanted to publicly record uh, my gratitude to my colleagues, to the leader. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I also wanted to record my enormous gratitude for the attention I've received from the National Party. <laughs> Two days in the job. So much love. A lot of attention. In fact. In fact, some of it has been some of it, some of it has been um, quite extraordinary. It, you might be interested to know uh, the, uh, our friends from the National Party, particularly in New South Wales, they reached for the ventilator, the hyperventilator, <laughs> and they put out a media or they put out a media statement that says Labor picks inner city MP as agriculture <laughs> spokesperson. Yeah. Now I am very proud, friends. I am very proud to represent. The area of Mount Druitt. Yeah. It, is, it is 50 kilometres plus. This inner city area is 50 kilometres away from the central business district of Sydney. Uh, but uh, uh, it, instead of reaching for hyperventilation, maybe if they reached for Google Maps, it might have helped. Um, I, uh, I also noted that our uh, good friend, the member for Kuyong and the treasurer, uh, wanted to also get in on the act. Uh, the, uh, the, he uh, picked out the fact he said that I was from an area that didn't have a sheep station. This, the member for Kuyong, who at one stage was the Minister for Northern Australia. That's right. Now, That's right. now I never knew that they stabled the colt for Kuyong in that Northern Australia area known as Melbourne. But I'm very grateful as well for his attention. But I tell you what else I'm very grateful for. As the Shadow Minister for Agriculture, I follow in the footsteps absolutely of people like the member for Hunter, but I also importantly on the Labor side follow in the footsteps of giants like John Kerrin, the yeah. member for Werrilla, um, or the member for Hotham in then yeah. Simon Crean, who was a minister absolutely. for agriculture. Yeah. These were people that cared deeply about the regions and they cared deeply about agriculture. And importantly, it's they didn't right. always think they were the smartest person in the room. That's they right. listened, they learned, they stood up. I, I also want to acknowledge too right. another person in the state government, in the New South Wales state government, uh, that was also recognised as an extraordinary spokesperson for agriculture, and that was Richard Amory, who That's represented right. yeah. the Mount seat Druitt. of Mount Druitt, did the same thing. Right. Did the same thing. They all cared. The Deputy Prime Minister gave me a bit of attention too, um, quoting my critically acclaimed speech that was critically acclaimed by myself uh, to the Eddie Graham uh, lecture. Now, all this attention about a suburban-based person, the temerity of them being able to represent the regions, the thing is um, it's easier to focus on that than to focus on this. I acknowledge firstly there are a lot of people that support the nationals in those rural areas. But the question you've got to ask is, do the nationals support those people back? That's right. Do they support them back when they need that support? And, and this is the track record of national representation in this place. Worst unemployment hotspots in the country in national seats. This is the stuff that the That's Deputy right. Prime Minister didn't quote in Hansard yesterday from that very speech. The worst health records or life expectancy in the country in national seats. 19 of the 20 electorates in the country with the highest life expectancy are Liberal. However, every single national seat in Australia has a life expectancy in the bottom third of all electorates. Every single one. They, they promised for ages they'd build a dam, and they haven't built dam one. Pardon the French. Not one. And a northern, infrastructure, a northern Australian infrastructure facility that in five years had uh, in the words of the leader, no actual infrastructure fund. 
we need, we need to ensure in the regions that there is delivery. These are the everyday Australians who are relying upon delivery by this government and are always let down. It's comical in part when you don't deliver, but when you seriously just keep making those announcements and don't deliver, it's this disrespectful. It's right. Treating as fools the people that depend on you. The people that turn up and say, we're hurting, we're going through a bushfire, we're going through a drought. Have you got a plan? And the nationals and the government say, no. Have you got money that we could actually use today to make our life easier? Well, no. So what have you got for us? A media release, an announcement, something, one thing after another with these people that continually says that they've got something in the pipeline, but they never deliver. They just want to be able to rattle it off. Look, for example, the Morrison government, who supported the National Farmers Federation, um, their ambition to grow farm gate output to 100 billion by 2030. On, in July of 2019, at the Dubbo Bush summit, the Prime Minister does what he does best. He makes all these big promises, doesn't follow through, claiming that that's why today I'm announcing the Agriculture Minister, Bridget McKenzie, will draw together a national plan to enable agriculture, fishers and forestries to become $100 billion. Now, they, they, that all means one thing, jobs. Now, despite, despite, the PM, despite the PM having committed to the 2030 roadmap in 2018, haven't developed a comprehensive plan. 26 October 2018, at the drought, drought summit, they announced the government's plan for the drought, a $5 billion future drought fund, often than ever and ever. Two years on, we're two years on from that, how much has been delivered? How much has been delivered with people who suffered through the drought? Donut. Nothing. Donut. Absolutely. A donut, an elusive fund, nothing delivered. The agriculture minister, who loves to announce, for example, um, that he wants to see smarter, he wants to see new ideas, smarter thinking, application with these research and development councils that he's got for regional and rural Australia. He's commissioned reports. He's had inquiries into the RDCs. We've had reports, we've had reviews into the reports, and then we've had new reports into those reports. The, I have to say he has had some success. The thing that is flourishing, the crop that is flourishing most under the Minister for Agriculture's watch is consultants' invoices. That's why. I don't know if there's like a, a Latin name for them, like consultantus, consultantus invoices. I don't know what it is, but that's the only thing he's been able to deliver. He's, he's only been able to deliver. Actually, I should have used that. Um, uh, the only thing he's been able to deliver is consultant reports, but nothing there for when people need it. Biosecurity, let the nation down. Said they'd look after us through the pandemic, and, the, and what, what happened with the Ruby Princess under his watch. And when he was asked about how to deal with it, what did he say? He said that biosecurity, that the Department of Agriculture isn't responsible for human health. Really? The Department of Agriculture, responsible for food, responsible for so many things, not responsible for human health, doesn't even know his own act. They do not have, they do not have an ability to follow through on their announcements. How many things have we seen? When we saw one Minister for Agriculture or, or the former Minister for Sports who made all these promises about what they would do with sports funds, and the only thing they delivered is that they skewed them to electorates, and she lost her job. That's right. And the Prime Minister said, back in January when the heat was on, that he would deliver for all those community, remember all those community groups that, that put that out. effort in, they applied for those grants. In good faith, they expected that money. They wanted that support, and they were let down because they were never going to get the support at all. Because the fix was in, it was always going to see money go to their mates, to the ones, to those areas where they were chasing the votes. And they said they would fix it up by coming up in this year's budget with something made an announcement at the press uh, club, and what happened now? They didn't deliver. Constantly one thing, not delivering on the other. Talking about all this money they'll spend on infrastructure. In fact, I got the Deputy Prime Minister to name a suburb um, in, in his, uh, one of his responses this week. It was the first time he acknowledged Marsden Park, which I've been trying to get infrastructure for. At least he acknowledged it finally now. But he's a minister that doesn't deliver. 
every year. Last year, $1.7 billion underspent in infrastructure, with all the needs that we have for infrastructure right. plus jobs. And when you count it out over six years, over a billion dollars that they underspend every, every year. single year. But they always spend on the ad campaign. Right. Like I said, like I said before, in part comical, but it is downright disrespectful when there is a big difference between the announcement and the delivery, and that's absolutely what they should stand condemned for. Yeah.